I refuse to be a broken man. It's disrespectful to everybody who ever died or tried hard for me to be raised, for me to emerge from this difficulty as a broken person. But that's absolutely not least really selfish. I refuse to be called broken. I refuse. Why don't you smile? I do. I do. But I figure something out. That's why I am never, you'll never hear me say I'm missing something. I found it years ago. You find it in the suck. You find it in the suck and you find it repeatedly in the suck to the point where you know exactly who you are. Most people are missing something because they don't know who they are. When I work out really hard, I have respect for myself. Yes. You know, yeah. um, if you force yourself to do something for that day, I know I'm not a lazy piece of shit for that day. Yeah. I know I'm focused for that day. When I'm done, I'm like, I know who I am. I yeah. get shit done. And the best men are the ones who suffered the most. I wouldn't be top G if I didn't suffer more than anyone else. You're the, you're a better man than everyone else. If your life was a mess, every time something happened to them, they sat there and they looked in the mirror and said, what can I learn from this? How can I stop this happening? You want to think that your life is so much harder than somebody else's. It's not. You're lazy. You don't want to put the effort in. You don't want to work at it. If you were truly unhappy and uncomfortable and discontent with your scenario, you wouldn't be in it. So I think I don't believe there's anybody who's truly, when I was broke, I couldn't sleep. Please understand me. When I was broke, I couldn't sleep. Sometimes I get up and when I see guys and I like to hang out, I see people in the car, they, they party, they came from party and hanging out. Wow. <laughs> this guy's over there having fun. I'm running. I did things right, but I never did the right thing. Like, will my life have something of substance and value that when people can see me and they can point to me, it makes them want to raise the standard and excellence in everything that they do and everything they're connected to and everything that they're part of? Or will people just say, man, this guy was a great jock. He was a great athlete. And when I got out of that hospital, I thought I was driven when I played sports. I thought I was dedicated and committed when I played sports. But there's a quote that says, when do a person start to really live? When a person has faced death and I came in contact with death, but I beat it and I conquered it and I survived. And I felt as if somebody pulled the shade top on my life and they said, now you see light for what it's really worth. My perspective had totally changed. There's not a motherfucker that's up. There's not a car. There's not a person. Everybody's in their bed, sleep, dreading that it's a Monday. Hey, this a Monday. And I'm loving it. It's not about the running, the swimming, the push-ups, the sit-ups. It's about what those things do for your mentality. You don't get better on the daggone couch. You get better by coming out here and getting the fuck after it every daggone day. I think that the best thing you can possibly do as a man is prepare for the endless difficulty that's going to come your way. There's no, there's no way out as a man. You're either going to have a very difficult life to become somebody important, or you're going to suffer the difficulty, be, difficulty of being invisible. What do you want to do? You want to be invisible and just hide and, and work in Starbucks and never have a girlfriend who truly loves you and nobody care if you live or die? Or do you want to go out there and be top G and be the most famous man in the world and have government agencies trying to lock you up for no reason, putting you in a dungeon? You have to make a choice. It's going to be difficult either way. We got the same ending. We're going to die. So if you know you're going to die, why are you playing it safe? Like if you know you're gonna die, why are you listening to other people tell you about your life? If you're gonna die, why don't you live your own life? You're gonna die anyway. Don't die on your grandma's terms. You're gonna die anyway. Don't die on your friend's terms. You're gonna die anyway. Don't die on your parents' terms. If you're gonna die, die on your own terms. What happens is you have all these voices that are telling you you're fucked up and this could be hard, but for some reason, you put so much practice into you that you can ignore every one of them that are telling you you're not going to fucking make it and still be able to fucking make it. Everybody wants to be a champion, but nobody's willing to put in the work that it takes to be a champion. Everybody wants to hold up the trophy and say, man, I did it, but nobody's willing to put in the work that it takes to do it. I love the process. You have to want it. You have to want to be better. And it starts off with you have to have pride in yourself. You, you have to have pride in yourself. Find something difficult to do. You need that. You're not built for comfort or pleasure. Like if that comes along, good. You know, if you have a day where you're comfortable and there's some things around you that give pleasure, have some sense and enjoy it. But don't be thinking that's what your life is aimed at. Life has a funny way of testing all of us and seeing how bad we really want what it is that we say we want. Because the thing I know about people, people can talk to talk. 
and people do it very well. But life is going to hit you with a certain level of opposition. Life is going to hit you with a certain level of adversity. And life is going to say to you, you said you wanted it. Now let's see how bad you really want it. Do you actually want to do this or not? Do you actually want to do this or not? Because if you actually want to do it, what's going to stop you? Nothing. And if you don't really want to do it, what's going to stop you? You might have sore legs, sore back, sore shoulder. So, the struggle is real. It never gets any easier. You got to get harder. I was out yesterday getting after it. Had one of the best runs I've had in a long time. No one cares what you did yesterday. It only matters what you're doing today. Those who take me literally. So, I'm a cheerleader for those who want to be better. Not for those who want to stay the same. Stay hard. Obsession's gonna be talent every time. You got all the talent in the world, but are you obsessed? Is it all you ever think about? Let's face it, it's you against you out there. When you walk on that court, you have to think I am the best guy out there. I don't care if LeBron's playing. So let me ask you again, do you love this game? Part of the reason that we're so obsessed with sports is because we like to see that dramatized, you know? Like, the person we really admire as an athlete isn't only the person who wins. We don't like the narcissistic winners. They're winners, and that's a plus. But if they're narcissistic, they're not good team players, they're only out for themselves, then we think, well, you're a winner in the narrow sense, but your character is suspect. You're no role model, even though you're a winner. And it's because we're looking for something deeper. We're looking for that, the manifestation of character that allows you to win across the set of possible games. And that's a real thing, that's a real ethic. You can give a quitter absolutely everything and they will still fail. Mm. You can give, a, it doesn't matter what it is. Quitters can have every single advantage. Quitters can have all the information. Quitters can have all the tutelage. Quitters can have a, a mentorship. Quitters can have someone who messages them every morning, hey bro, let's get it. And guess what they're gonna do at the end? Quit. Quit, <laughs> they ain't never gonna have shit. You can, you can say whatever you want about me. You can call me arrogant. You can call me anything you want, but you cannot call me a quitter. I didn't quit. So that's the difference. When it was hard, I did it anyway. That's who I've always been. And if you don't have that kind of tenacity, you're never gonna be anything. All of us are created equal. Some of us just grind. Some of us don't make excuses. Some of us don't surrender. Some of us don't give up and give in. What we do with the pressure is we say, I gotta take it, and I gotta take it to another level. You your advantage. Why are you waiting for somebody to call you? Why are you waiting for somebody to liberate you? Why are you waiting for somebody to affirm you? Why are you waiting for somebody to tell you got a dream or go? Why are you waiting for somebody to take you by your hand and give you what's rightfully yours? However much money you make, whatever kind of life you have, that's yours. When I hear people say, oh, it's hard, or I don't have time, et cetera, et cetera, all you're doing is telling me you're a loser. Every single winner feels the same as you do. The difference is they do not quit. They do not give up. They do not make excuses. They stay on the highway. It's amazing what you can achieve if you never give up.